What do you do? You grab on Tencent Duck Tail shorts. Ooh, that sounded wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on the DuckTales shorts. Because, you know, we already watched all of season one and that's all that was left. <laughs> yep, bunch of shorts. We even double checked the YouTube channel in case there were some that weren't in Disney app. I, I would like to state that that's the most exposure I've ever had to emojis. Yeah. One of their shorts was DuckTales told through emojis, which is basically just a theme song with a little bit of glom gold tossed in, which was funny. But yeah, the shorts were, most of them were done and released before the show came out. So they were nice little teasers to get you interested in the show by showing you different characters. Like the one for Mrs. Beakley. You just see this woman vacuuming while the kids are running back and forth in the background screaming. That should be the interesting part. But we're watching this woman vacuum. I like the little part if you watch in the background, you see Dewey go whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Up and down the wall sideways as he's clinging to it, trying not to be dragged away. I'm just surprised Webby is like, ah! I think it was probably funnier that way. Also, if you look at the actual pilot episode, she's still freaked out about the ghost. Hmm. Blackbeak. Because, you know, if she doesn't have a Medusa gauntlet or any supernatural weapons, I mean, what good's a grappling hook going to do you? Yeah, I guess she needs that vacuum cleaner Mrs. Beakley has. Oh, it was just so calm. Flip from dirt to ghost. Take care of the ghost, flip back to dirt, and clean up the dirt that the children tracked through. I thought they were actually going to have her stop and yell at them and then deal with the ghost in front of them. Quite possible. But I think the whole thing is the fact that she's calm under pressure. Quite. And I think it's also that she's secretly kicked tail. Ah, yes. You know, the whole spy thing. Yeah, I, I think she's definitely a spy for McDuck. This is why she has to keep reminding him because she's been in undercover so much for so long that, he f that he's forgotten. <laughs> Until he looks at the sellers, he's like, why am I paying Beakley this much? These shorts are just so much fun. I mean, just look at the pattern. I mean, these animation shorts were just so fun. The They were just such a great way to encapsulate each character like Launchpad. I love how you just see him. Oh, there's a small dent on this car. The front just bent in a little bit. The funniest part to me is the fact that my boss will pay for this. You don't just scratch out the part of happily pay. Scratch. You scratch out the whole part about... Well... Scrooge will pay for it, but it's all going to come out of Launchpad's salary. I'm wondering the last time Launchpad actually got paid. <laughs> Good point. But I love that effect of... It goes into a story about how Scrooge actually paid for another incident. And then he realizes, oh, uh, thank you, he will pay. <laughs> Grabs it, turns around, and the camera zooms out. The plane is crashed into the background. There's a whole line of cars destroyed. <laughs> And he starts on his next letter. And then we have the time clock. That that one was interesting, but it felt a little weak for Meet Scrooge. Yeah, I thought it was more like Meet Louie. I was like, oh, Louie not listening and messing and touching expensive stuff. I love how you reacted when you read the title as it was loading up. It says Meet Scrooge and you go, oh, and then this, even though it was still entertaining, I love the last part of like, we probably don't want to go and take care of that. <laughs> and... I actually skipped over Dewey's, no, Red, Hue, Huey, Huey, thank you, Sasami-chan. Huey's of like, ah, oh, the woodchuck guidebook, how to set up a tent. When they actually show the book, it's how to catch a Bigfoot. It's like, oh, guidebook, you know everything. <laughs> guidebook, you know everything. And that goes back to the Terra Firma episode where writes it down, I feel so much better now. It's proven to be real. <laughs> it's in the book. I love how you even said, like, the book comes with a bunch of blank pages so you can fill it in yourself. <laughs> Let's see, Launchpad short, Beakley short, ah, Webby short. It just, I could see it coming. I mean, as she was going for that, I'm like, oh, wow, all this for a cookie? Also, what's wrong with oatmeal raisin? The only thing wrong with oatmeal raisin is that it's not chocolate chip. That's a valid point, but I would have been like, well, I'll have two cookies. Because <laughs> I would have grabbed oatmeal raisin on the way down to get the chocolate chip. <laughs> Yeah, I would have gone, oh, oatmeal raisin, grab. And then he goes, oh, yeah, I grabbed the last chocolate chip. I would stick the oatmeal raisin in my mouth and then dive down and get him. That or... <laughs> also valid, also valid. Oatmeal is dense. Just to clarify for people, I was miming 
Webby tossing the oatmeal cookie as a throwing star right into Dewey's head. And then there's poor Donald short, which I think is the longest of the shorts other than the, um, well, it's not really a short, but we'll go into Yeah, it it's the longest of the animated shorts, uh, clocking in at a full minute. But you needed to tell that intricate tale of how Scrooge is a cheapskate. You think I'm going to buy a new candle every time? Do you know how much that would cost? Do you have any idea how old I am? <laughs> no, we tried to figure it out. With the way he said that in that short and how we're like thinking about it in the series, like, how old is Scrooge? Is he like in his hundreds, actually? <laughs> then it makes you wonder, how old is Glumgold? And I have a feeling Glumgold's younger. Yeah, that's what I keep thinking. Because, well, not necessarily. I'm thinking more of the timing of when they made their fortunes. Was he at any point the richest duck? And then Scrooge leapfrogged past him? Hmm. Interesting. I think this all ties back into Magicka. I think that's where they're going with this. Because her being trapped in something tells me that most likely Scrooge put her there. And it may actually be the key to his fortune. Which may be why she wants to get back at Scrooge. Yes. And, you know, even though we haven't seen it, we know she's going to be after number one dime. Because Magicka is always after number one dime. Yeah. And something that's been kind of going around in the back of my head, I wonder if they're actually including the movie lore into this series. That would be interesting. Because it's a reboot. All of it's up for grabs. Comics, original series. Because in the movie, there was this amulet that could give you unlimited wishes when put on this genie's lamp and the amulet that she currently is wearing reminds me a lot of that particular amulet eh, a little bit but yeah it would be interesting to include that including the bad guy that was in that movie i could deal without the time travel and bubba and the dinosaur but the other thing i moved on from actually i should go back and finish describing the wonderfulness that is donald's once again is his character because it's like <laughs> 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 also goes into that whole bad luck thing yes it does also i'd like to know how scrooge stores that candle in between birthdays yeah how do you put out a candle that doesn't go out at under any circumstances that does anything necessary in order to stay lit because at first i thought scrooge was just having a joke i thought all of, i figured it was going to be one of those relighting candles i'm like oh it's just a joke no it's a mystical object that will never go out mm -hmm, and we'll fight you if you try to do it and burn up all the presents poor donald you have to wonder though with donald's luck how is he such a qualified adventurer i think it's the whole you have so much bad luck you're good uh, the you're so bad you're good? Kind of like how some movies are so awful they're funny. Yeah, or so bad you can't help but watch them because they're a masterpiece of terrible filmmaking. I have experience in this. Yeah, I, I suppose you could put that up as an example. Please don't put it up on YouTube. We have subscribers. <laughs> I, I actually can't for legal reasons. Oh, I never thought I'd thank the legal system for anything media related. <laughs> uh... But speaking of media related, there's that great clip of Donald, I should say that great ad for the series with Donald in it. With basically everything falling and going wrong and his just constantly changing expressions. And, oh. <laughs> and pretty much fainting at the end. Reasonable response. Yeah, it's a great way to show how he's interacting with the series and what the series is going to be about. And then you actually get to watch the cast sing the DuckTales theme song, which is one of those other teasers where they're like, we're doing DuckTales. I believe that was actually shown first before they showed anything else. That was the first thing they put up as media to get you intrigued in the series. Well, anything with the DuckTales theme song, because that thing is catchy. It's like number one on everyone's top ten list of catchiest children's TV show intros. Poor Doug Walker. Quite. Poor me. Because the moment I hear it, it's like, oh, it's going to be in my head for a while. Not that it's a bad thing, but still, it's going to be in there for a while. And Amber's going to hear me randomly hum it every now and then for a while. Yes, yes, until I say the magic words. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. <laughs> and then my brain jumps up to, I'm going to drive my van into your heart. <laughs> Which I saw that fluffle puff clip way before I ever saw Steven Universe. I think we've covered all the shorts. Are we missing any? Well, we haven't really 
<laughs> Kitty just whacked Ember in the face with her tail. Kitty is napping and her tail has a mind of its own. I say we haven't really talked about Dewey, but I don't really remember him having his own short. No, I don't think he did. No. Because we had Huey with the tent. We had Louie with the clock. Well, that was technically Scrooge's clip, yeah. but he was in it. I think the closest we got is Dewey with Webby. Also, he was the one clinging to the wall in Mrs. Beakley's. Ah, well, they were all in that one. But I'm saying he had a slightly more focal role. <laughs> He's including the hand gestures, in case you're wondering. Everything about this show so far is just so good. Yeah, the only problems have not been the show. I think the overall in the show itself of the actual produced content, to me, the weakest thing was the emoji. But if you think about the timing of when that was done... It might have lined up with the Emoji movie, of all things. So, Emoji's kind of a thing. Yeah, which was the Emoji movie. The biggest cash grab ever. Because this movie was basically a commercial for a bunch of mobile apps. They paid so much to be a part of this movie. So yeah, these were great teasers, great introductions to the characters. It's kind of fun watching them after the fact and lining them up with how well they illustrate the characters as they are portrayed in the series. Because I didn't watch any of these before the series. The only thing I watched before the series was the intro theme song. That's it. And I happened to watch all of these before the... <laughs> well, all of them except for the emoji one and... I think that was it actually i think that was the only short i didn't actually watch before the series came out that one may have come out as the series came out too because i kind of stopped watching things after i went oh oops we have to wait a bit and then we waited overly long because you know life it's more than just a breakfast cereal <laughs> uh or a board game so shall we wrap things up mm -hmm. they were so good i really enjoyed them it was a nice thing to watch while we're waiting for Disney to either give us the rest of season one or call this season one and give us season two. <laughs> so, outro. Yes, because we've spent more time speaking than it took to watch the shorts, including the amount of time we spent watching the Pacific Rim commercials. Which was awesome. Which was closer to Disney's app failing a little bit because for a 24 minute episode, we got two 15 second commercials but for 45 second clips we got a 30 second commercial hmm yeah but the commercials were slightly different each time it was one per short and it went back and forth between two different pacific rim ones so basically it was all pacific rim and counting the amount of time of the shorts plus the commercials we've spent more time discussing the shorts than it took you to watch them <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on the DuckTail shorts. Because we can. Okay, we're going to do the short, short version. Do you like this channel? If yes, hit the like button. If no, thank you for your time. Comment, share, watch other videos. Like Lux's art, you can find it all over the internet. He takes commissions. There are links. Click them. We also accept money. There are links. Click them. Thank you to all current subscribers, patrons, commissioners, and thank you to all the future ones. We hope you're out there.